Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, not live. Uh, I have decided to do the pre-recorded thing, uh, and I think I'm going to do that for my CD collection videos uh, from now on. I've noticed in the last couple of live streams, uh, maybe not the last consecutive couple of live streams, uh, there's been a signal dropout, and when that happens, my picture freezes, and I don't know, of course, I don't know what you guys saw and what you guys didn't see, so I end up probably repeating a lot more than I need to repeat. So I decided, you know, in order to avoid that signal dropout thing, I think these CD collection videos I'm going to do as pre-recorded things. I'll still do, do my bargain bag and other things, maybe live, but anyway. So yes, uh, today, <coughs> excuse me, today I present chapter four, I believe it is, of my whole darn CD collection. You guys have been waiting for this. It's been uh, at least a month. I think since I did my last CD collection, so it's about time. But yes, my next 90 CDs in my collection, along with three uh, late arrivals that are in the parts of my collection that I've already covered. I, I like to do that, you know, just fill you in on what I've acquired since I did my CD collection uh, the chapters before. So uh, first one here is Asia. This is a live CD uh, done in Moscow in 1990. Uh, actually bought this off of Noah's Discogs page. It just kind of looked interesting. So. <clears throat> and it was pretty good, I have to say. So, uh, yay Asia. Uh, it's I, I have their first two albums on vinyl. Uh, used to have them on CD, but got them on vinyl. Uh, next up here we have Kristen Chenoweth, actress and singer. Uh, this is her album, For the Girls. I picked up another one uh, from a thrift store, from the uh, St. Vinny's thrift store, and I really enjoyed it. That was her debut album, and this is her most recent one. I found this at a Barnes & Noble a few months ago, I think it was. Very good stuff. Uh, sometimes her voice is a little bit, uh, a little bit harsh, a little bit trebly for me, sometimes, but she's, she hits the notes and all that, and so she's really good. Next one I actually picked up at House of Records uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, Edie Brickell and New Bohemians, uh, their album Stranger Things. Uh, I saw, picked this one. I uh, picked this one up first of all because it was there, but also because I looked on uh, their discography on Wikipedia and realized this was the only, only studio album of theirs that I was missing. So I figured, why not pick it up? And it's just as good as their other albums. So there you go. That catches us up with what uh, I acquired since from uh, A through the beginning of C and we left off with the Canadian tenors in the last chapter so let's pick up right after that here we have Carbon Leaf this is a group that is uh, folk rock slightly Americana-ish not quite country uh, I cannot remember where I found out about these guys it was probably on a sampler or a compilation I uh, heard a couple of good songs off of theirs and so I decided to uh, pick up this one Indian Summer as well as their subsequent album Love, Loss, Hope, Repeat. That's kind of an interesting uh, play on words on the title with a bank of washing machines there. You know. And one of the songs that has particularly stuck out for me on this album was The War Was in Color. Very, very good song. Uh, listen to that one, if no, if no other songs. Hang on, let me get rid of a stubborn warning on my computer that means absolutely nothing. Uh, then from Carbon Leaf we go into Mariah Carey. Gotta have some Mariah Carey being an 80s guy. Of course, her, most of her day, heyday was in the 90s. This was her debut album. Oh, actually, all of her heyday was in the 90s. Excuse me. This was done in 1990, her debut album, self-titled. Great stuff on here. Vision of Love, I Don't Want to Cry, Someday, and uh, Love Takes Time. That's a great song. And uh, we're going to keep on going with Mariah. We have her sophomore album, Emotions, uh, the title track, as well as... Uh, can't let go and make it happen was, wasn't that a signal it was a good song if it wasn't a single uh, next up we have her unplugged EP very very good and her third studio album music box and uh, this one uh, I think has probably the most songs in it that I'm fond of for some reason uh, dream lover and hero anytime you need a friend um, Without You, I think, is one that I really enjoy. So, uh, But yeah, that is the extent of my Mariah Carey collection, at least for now. <clears throat> and then we have a very new CD. This was put out at uh, in the, the final quarter of last year, I think it was, like October or something. Uh, Brandy Carlisle, 
uh, in these silent days. This is the only album of hers that I have, but I honestly, I really enjoyed it, and I will probably be exploring her discography later on. Uh, yeah, this was almost, this was kind of a, a whims, or a whims, uh, impulse purchase, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, I heard so many good things about it online, and uh, focus is a little bit off on the camera. Not sure why, but, uh, well, you, you, you can tell what I'm showing you, at least, even if it's not razor-sharp focus. Uh, anyway, onward with uh, yet another. Th this is actually a pretty good string of female artists we have here. Uh, next one up, uh, Vanessa Carlton with her debut album, Be Not Nobody. And this is actually a uh, UK, yes, a UK edition with the uh, something that, that they did for a while uh, in the UK with Universal. Uh, label, uh, the Universal label family of titles. Uh, if it w had bonus tracks on it or something, they would put this foil special edition sticker on it. I have a handful of those in my collection. Uh, but yes, uh, A Thousand Miles is of course her big hit. And there are a couple other... Oh, she does a cover of Paint It Black, the um, Rolling Stones song. Uh, which is pretty good. Not, not the first kind of song that you would think of Vanessa Carlton covering but it kind of works. And uh, then we go on with another classic uh, artist here, and again, female vocalist, The Carpenters. This is a two-disc um, anthology of theirs, Yesterday Once More, two-disc greatest hits album. Uh, they're one of those artists that I, I really enjoy, just not quite enough to get their individual studio albums. This, of course, has uh, 44 and 28 songs on here, so all of the hits that I would ever need in one convenient package. So, I mean, I, I absolutely love some of their songs. Um, Rainy Days and Mondays is a great one. Oh, what are the two songs that I really, really enjoy? Wait a minute. My brain is just not quite with it here. Um, oh, We've Only Just Begun and They Long To Be Close To You. Those are the... Gosh, my brain has been kind of weird for the last uh, week or two. That's why I didn't give you a video last weekend, was just because uh, I, I wasn't in the headspace for it, and it's been kind of a strange uh, couple of weeks. But anyway, that's why uh, that, that's, uh, I'm using that to explain any brain farts that I have in this video, just so you know. Uh, here next we have another two-disc Greatest Hits collection, The Cars, uh, just what I needed, their anthology, and lots of great songs. Um, 80s pop and rock and uh, kind of venturing into the power pop genre. Uh, great, great stuff on here. Just what, just what I needed and Drive and Candy O and what were some of the other ones? Oh, Shake It Up. That's a great, great song. And so yeah, and You Might Think is another great song of theirs. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to take a drink before I... Uh, well, I don't know if there is explaining any explaining this next one, but... Uh, This might be the guiltiest pleasure I have in my collection, po quite possibly. And I, I told you guys I was going to show you all of my CDs, my whole darn CD collection, so it's going to be uncensored. Aaron Carter, okay, let me have it, come on. Uh, this, hey, he's got some great sugary, silly pop tunes that just were just kind of irresistible to me. And I, I can't remember the last time I put the CD in to listen to. So in that respect, I don't know why I still have it in my collection, but hey. Uh, Another Earthquake is uh, one of my favorite songs of his. I, I'm not sure why. Just, you know, he's just kind of, he just does weird, well, not weird, but just silly, catchy, funny songs that, you know, it's, it's pop completely, what am I trying to say? Um, Pop music doesn't need to have substance to it, you know, in order to be enjoyable and fun. And Aaron Carter is proof of that. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, then we go into his brother, whom I, I really enjoy and have ever since Backstreet Boys uh, uh, kind of got uh, going on its uh, at its high point. Nick Carter. This is his debut uh, solo album, Now or Never. Uh, this was put out right after after Millennium or after Black and Blue. I cannot remember. But uh, what I really liked about him on this album was that he kind of ha had a Brian Adams thing going on, a uh, raspy voice, and the songs were mostly in a rock, kind of a rock sort of a vein. Very much pop, yes, but with kind of a rock. Uh, used a lot of electric guitars uh, to give it a rock sound. So 
but unfortunately after that he kind of reverted back to a more pop and R&B thing and uh, he's actually put out uh, two other solo albums since then sophomore album is I'm Taking Off uh, not as good as his first album but I still enjoy it uh, what can I say and, and yeah his, his second and third albums if you like Backstreet Boy stuff and especially if Nick Carter is your favorite Backstreet Boy his albums are worth listening to then we actually have a collaborative collaborative album with um, is it Jonathan or Jordan Knight Jordan Knight of New Kids on the Block this was I can't remember if it was before or after they, they did their collaborative album NKOTBT NKOTBSB which which I did not was not fond of and honestly I've not been fond of New Kids on the Block's uh, more recent stuff just did not float my boat at all but uh, I had to have this one because it had Nick Carter in it he was half of the group so there you go and then finally Nick Carter's most recent studio album All American and uh, despite the title this one and his last album I'm Taking Off were at least I think they were only released at least on physical form I think only in Japan or Japan and Southeast Asia maybe but uh, yeah again this kind of goes back to a uh, uh, much more of a pop and R&B sound um, I know there's at least one Avril Lavigne fan who watches my videos regularly and one of the songs on this album is a duet with Avril Lavigne it's called Get Over Me so you Avril Lavigne enthusiasts go hunt down that song and then here we have um, I've got several examples of this throughout my collection uh, where I've had CD singles by a particular artist and I decided to combine them I still save the original inserts from the J cards you know the, the thin CD, uh, the thin European CD single cases that have the J cards with them I save those cards but I took the singles uh, if I have multiples of two and put them into one um, you know double CD case and I have I use my own artwork I find artwork on the web that I think looks good and so I create my own case out of it and so this is uh, two Nick Carter singles help me and I got you and of course uh, being a, a, compl a completist and sort of a geek I put the track listings and the uh, songwriting credits and stuff on the back <clears throat> I like to make them look at least semi-professional what can I say so yes that is an example uh, the Nick Carter example of this uh, CD single piggybacking thing homemade insert thing that I do uh, now moving on from uh, Nick Carter to an artist with slightly more substance Johnny Cash uh, we have his uh, American recordings volume one uh, very very good stuff I um, I don't know what what to say about it uh, very different from his uh, previous work is uh, much more of a singer-songwriter kind of a thing he has going for him and a lot of this stuff is just himself and a guitar uh, produced by Rick Rubin who is an amazing producer uh, go check out uh, at least uh, some of these albums I have the first three volumes of his American recording series here we have uh, volume two Unchained and this one he does some uh, covers or is no is it the first one I can't remember shame on me I can't remember uh, no, it's actually I think it's the third one actually he does uh, covers um, more well-known covers uh, American three solitary man uh, yeah this one and I think I think it's this one where he's backed by Tom Petty's band uh, the Heartbreakers so yes uh, yeah he does I won't back down the Tom Petty song as well as uh, oh that lucky old son which was which is an American songbook great American songbook uh, standard one which is a U2 song as well as uh, gosh I can't remember what other covers he does but anyway suffice it to say they're very good albums and I also have his classic stuff uh, the essential Johnny Cash a two-disc set um, what can I say Johnny Cash is one of those artists that uh, <clears throat> excuse me country artists that kind of transcends genre kind of like Willie Nelson I, I kind of put him in the same category you know the same grandiose I guess you'd say category as Willie Nelson uh, and Dolly Parton to an extent so. now we're moving on to uh, another one of the artists in uh, I mentioned I've mentioned in previous CD collection videos about um, my penchant for collecting winners and finalists from the world idol franchises you know the uh, different countries versions of American Idol or pop idol this one is from France and his name is Jonathan Serrada 
I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name quite properly, but this is his uh, debut album, Siempre 23. Translate 23 into Spanish, I think. Uh, yes, he is French, but he does songs in a couple of different languages on this album, I believe. Or no, maybe it's just all French. So I don't know if it always is translated into the same word in French, French as it is in Spanish, just the pronunciation differs. I have no idea. Uh, and then we have his sophomore album, La Prévue du Contraire, which I don't know what that means, but uh, he's a good artist, I gotta say. And uh, yeah, not one of my favorite world idol artists, but still very, very good, uh, as, as evidenced by the fact that I have two albums of his. And then we have Tom Chaplin. He is the frontman for the UK rock band Keen, in case you didn't know. And this is his solo debut album. And this actually, uh, for other reasons other than the fact that the music is really good, um, I, it's one that I bought from Skips. One of the last CDs I bought from Skips. It's still got the Skips price sticker on there. So there we go. As many of them as possible that I bought from Skips, uh, once I realized the store was going out of business, I kept the Skips tag on them. So just for nostalgia's sake, what can I say? And then we have a uh, 80s. Yes, uh, 1988, I believe it says, because it's so small, and uh, I think I might need new glasses. Tracy Chapman, her self-titled debut album. Excellent stuff. I mean, uh, you know the songs, Talking About a Revolution, Fast Car, uh, Baby Can I Hold You. I mean, this is a classic. Period. The end. It's a classic. And then here we have... I've always wanted to do, to do a video uh, where I talk about, in my opinion, obviously, albums that every serious music fan should have in their collection, regardless of what genres they love and appreciate the most. And I've considered this one of those albums. Uh, this is actually, this is in a modified form. It's not the original release, but it is Modern Sounds in Country and Western Music by Ray Charles. This is a disc collecting volumes one and two, along with a couple of bonus tracks. Excellent stuff. I mean, this is this was really where uh, Ray Charles kind of started his R and B thing, his well, no, soul uh, music, and where um, the first really definitive proof, I think, of how songs from one genre could be transferred into another genre. And he did fantastic stuff. And that's kind of what soul music was at the beginning was. Um, the early soul artists, Ray Charles included, took gospel songs and reworked them into R&B and contemporary pop arrangements. So uh, Ray Charles was a genius. And speaking of Ray Charles, I have, this was from my sister's collection and it was one of the uh, most uh, in best condition things from my sister's collection. I mean, you can see it, just a couple little dents on the uh, box, but otherwise it's in excellent condition. And this is a collection of two CDs, his Genius Lost Company album, which is an absolute classic, a fantastic album, along with uh, Race, Racing Spacey Swings, the Ray, Ray Charles with the Count Basie Orchestra. Uh, two fantastic albums in a collection, and uh, one of the gems that I got from my sister's CD collection. Really, really enjoy this one, and how can you not love Ray Charles? And we have another Ray Charles. I think this was also from my sister's collection, Visionary Soul. This is basically just a compilation of classic Ray Charles stuff. Excellent stuff. Uh, Hit the Road Jack, uh, Nighttime is the Right Time, uh, Them That Got, and uh, let's see, uh, You Don't Know Me, and Living for the City. Bunch of great stuff on here. I, I think I probably need... There's some Ray Charles songs that I don't have that I would like to seek out at some point. And pick up so that will probably not be the last Ray Charles compilation I buy. Actually I don't think I bought that one I think it was in my sister's collection. Anyway as I ramble on um, next we have another boy band solo artist we have JC Chazé from NSYNC this is his one and thus far only solo album Schizophrenic this one is pretty darn good uh, I think it was it did not do well I don't think in the grand scheme of things but I really really enjoyed it uh, oh gosh, what can I say? This is one I, I haven't listened to this in quite a long time, so I can't remember. Um, what's the one? Uh, Everything You Want is actually very, very reminiscent of The Police or Sting. He does a great police impression on that song. That one's fantastic. It's a real standout. And um, 
Blowing Me Up With Her Love. That was a single that was put uh, included on here. And what was... Uh, oh, A Hundred Ways is pretty good. Oh, Build My... Build My World. That was a good ballad on this album. So, uh, yeah, if you're if you're curious, give this one a try. It's it's really good. Incorporates a lot of different uh, pop and R and B styles into it, and uh, still seems to be relatively cohesive in its sound. So, and then from there we move on to a group that uh, I own these CDs because I have a uh, friend of mine who sadly passed away back in was it 2014, 2015, something like that. And this was, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, his all-time favorite artist. It is the Chemical Brothers, and he's the kind of guy that I never would have imagined would have liked somebody like the Chemical Brothers. I would have expected him to like like Leonard Skinner or uh, you know, Bachman Turner Overdrive or you know something like that, some Southern rock kind of thing. But no, he loved the Chemical Brothers. This is their two-disc singles compilation, uh, and I also have Push the Button, which is. Uh, well, I was going to say it's my favorite Chemical Brothers album, but it's kind of is by default because it's the only album, studio album of theirs that I have. But this one is really good. It's got the song Galvanize, which is a fantastic song. Yeah, excuse me, one more second. going to take another drink here. Then we have uh, somebody that I just mentioned recently uh, in my uh, uh, recent acquisitions at the beginning of this video, Kristen Chenoweth. Her debut album, Let Yourself Go. A lot of great uh, great American songbook standards on this one. And I actually also talked about this one in a recent um, playlist. It wasn't last month. I think it was a month before. So uh, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I will go ahead and finally incorporate this one into its proper place in my collection. And then we have another... Yeah, it's kind of funny, the number of female artists that I have, uh, that I've been talking about in this video. Ten years ago, I wouldn't have had half the female artists that I have now. It's just, I don't for some reason, I don't know if it was because of my sister or just because my tastes in general have widened. And, and actually, my tastes in general in music have widened since and probably because of my sister's passing. So we'll go ahead and use, no, we'll go ahead and say, yes, that's the reason for it. Cher. And this is a two-disc compilation of her, The Way of Love. Uh, I actually, this is another one I bought from Noah's, dis Noah's discography. I, I probably bought half the people that uh, he's sold stuff to, or, or half the sales that he's made on Discogs are probably mine. Okay, that's probably an exaggeration, but it kind of feels that way. Um, but hey, he's had a lot of stuff that I've wanted to listen to and wanted to keep, it turns out. And then we have her classic comeback album from the 90s, the 90s, I think, uh, 1998. Was it that recent? 1998, really? Uh, anyway, yes, Believe. Uh, of course, the, the song Believe, as well as uh, Strong Enough. So, yeah. good album. Maybe not share at her very best, but still, very, very good album. And now we're moving on into a country artist, and here's another thing, um, kind of like female artists. Country artists are ones uh, that I, you know, 10 years ago I had virtually none in my collection, and now I have several. Uh, one of them is Kenny Chesney. I got, oh, uh, what, four of his albums. I've got Lucky Old Son, and this one actually features Willie Nelson uh, duetting with him on the title track, as well as Dave Matthews. Uh, that's One thing that kind of caught my attention about Kenny Chesney was he kind of brings um, interesting, you know, non-country artists in to duet on his albums. Uh, but yes, um, Dave Matthews, as I mentioned, as well as The Wailers. Bob Marley's group, The Wailers, is also on here, so... Go figure. And it works. I mean, the songs work. And the next one I have of his is Welcome to the Fishbowl. This was the first one that I uh, took home and listened to. I think it was on the freebie shelf at House of Records. And rather enjoyed it. Uh, Tim McGraw guests on one track. And uh, Grace Potter is on another one here. Uh, but it turns out I like these next two albums of his a lot more than those other two. Uh, the Big Revival is probably my favorite Kenny Chesney album thus far. Uh, the, the title track, the opening track, is just amazing. I love it. And uh, American Kids is another pretty good one. And which what other ones do we have? Um, Till It's Gone was a really good one, as I recall. And uh, Rock Bottom. And uh, Save It for a Rainy Day is a really good one. And, and Grace Potter again guests on another track on this album. So 
<clears throat> Good stuff. And then his second most recent, or would it be third most recent album, uh, Cosmic Hallelujah. This is another good one. And this one, uh, again, with for its um, unconventional guest appearances, uh, Pink guest stars on one track on here. So, uh, yeah. And some of the songs on here, another one, another thing I like about this album, it's, uh, it's got songs about, you know, uh, big question songs, I guess you'd say. is I guess That's the best way I have to describe, to describe it. But just uh, existential songs, that's the word that I should use. Uh, Trip Around the Sun is the opening track, and so, you know, it's kind of like <clears throat> talking about your place in the world sort of songs, you know. I, I just kind of like those songs. You, you need something other than love songs, you know. And then, now this artist is one that you probably have never heard of because he is a local artist, local to the Eugene area. And uh, his name is Brian Chevalier, and he's actually, uh, he was actually, uh, no, never mind. Uh, yeah, Brian Chevalier. Uh, the Way You Look is uh, one of the albums of his. And he he's dabbled in a few different genres. He, uh, oh, actually, he performs at a, a local establishment, a little local bar, tavern sort of thing. Uh, so that's what I was trying to say. Uh, yeah, he's done Zydeco, and he's done Country, and he's done kind of barroom rock sort of stuff. Uh, so he's kind of dabbled in a few different genres, and this is another album of his that I have called Heavy Chevy. And that's actually uh, the name of uh, his band. Not sure if Heavy Chevy is still together or if he's moved on to another band, but uh, yes, yeah, a lot of good stuff on both of these albums. I really enjoy it. Uh, enjoy listening to his stuff. So uh, yeah, pretty good, good guy. I don't know why I don't have a lot of local artists in my collection. I guess just because I have a hard enough time keeping up with the big name acts. But that's the way it goes. Speaking of big name acts, Chicago. Uh, this is their album Night and Day, which is uh, mostly uh, Great American Songbook or classic pop uh, covers and stuff like kind of like a big band sort of album. Um, interest, kind of interesting that they took that direction with uh, the album, but I thought it was pretty good. And then the only other Chicago release that I have on CD, I actually have one or two on LP, uh, this is their compilation, their two discs uh, set, The Very Best of Chicago, Only the Beginning. Every Chicago chart hit that you would want is on somewhere on these two discs. Great stuff. And then we move on to the only... Uh, Another warning. No, I don't want to restart now. I'm in the middle of doing a video. Thanks. Anyway, uh, another uh, another CD we have here. This is the only CD by this artist that I have that is not a box set. It is Eric Clapton's Unplugged album. Uh, I've actually gotten um, a pretty good handful. I think I mentioned might have mentioned this in my last CD collection video. I've got several of the MTV Unplugged series, partly because I'm kind of in a collecting mode. When I, you know, when I start getting one or two or three, I start getting more just because I have, you know, the, the collecting bug, I guess, kind of gets you. But, uh, yeah, Clapton, unplugged. That's pretty good. I also have a four-disc box set of his, and both the unplugged and the four-disc box set came from my sister's collection. So it's one reason, primary reason why I have them, because she absolutely loved Clapton. Fortunately, she didn't live to see the jerk he's become. Uh, anyway, on to a, yet another female artist, and this is a classic artist, Petula Clark. I have a soft spot for, for Petula. She started singing back in the 60s, uh, great, great pop songs, and she's in her 80s, and she's still going at it. Uh, this is album is from 2013, and it's all original songs, and she's still got her voice all these decades later. And uh, this is her, I believe, her most recent album from now on. And so, yeah, I, I love me some Petula Clark, regardless of what era she's from. What can I say? <clears throat> Excuse me. I was thinking I would maybe do two of these videos in one day, but by the time I get to the end of one, my voice is uh, done and needs a rest. So, anyway, on from Petula Clark to another female artist whose last name starts with Clark. Yes, Kelly Clarkson. Uh, I've mentioned recently in my in my haul videos and also I think in my uh, playlist videos recently that I've uh, obtained uh, Kelly Clarkson's entire discography, finally, uh, for, from her first album, Thankful, on through 
my December, as well as Breakaway, along with All I Ever Wanted, in addition to Stronger. And lest we forget, piece by piece. Uh, so oh yeah, that's that's the last one. I do I do have um, what's the name? what's the name of her, mo her most recent album? Uh, I just haven't listened to it yet. It's still in my to be listened to rack, which is why it's not here in amongst amongst my official collection. So I don't put them in here until I have finished listening to them and uh, can officially call them part of my collection. And anyway, on to. The Clash. Uh, this is their album, London Calling. This is a must-have album, and I don't have any of The Clash's other albums simply because I'm not much into punk, but uh, I realized upon listening to this album that it's really kind of a stretch classifying The Clash as punk. They are so diverse on this album. Even if you don't care for punk, you got to listen to London Calling. It's a great album, and uh, yes, I, despite how wonderful I, I think it is, for some reason, I have not gone on to other Clash albums. I don't know why. And then we have another... Um, here's an artist who has one of the silliest names out of any artist that I have. I just, for some reason, I just don't like their name. The Click Five. But uh, they're great musicians. I mean, or, or I guess were. I, it's been quite a while since they put out an album. Uh, but yes, excuse me. This is their debut album, Greetings from Emory House. And pretty much as they've gone on, their albums have gotten better, I think. Uh, this is their sophomore album, Modern Minds and Pastimes. I like the title of that album. And what are some of the... Um, Addicted to Me is a great album, or uh, a great song. Uh, Long Way to Go is probably my favorite off this album. But uh, their most recent album is my favorite and one of my favorite albums of all time. In fact, I think this was in... Uh, this would have been in my 2010s favorite albums of the decade, and I think it was in within the top 25, I think, uh, their album TCV. This is just fantastic power pop, power pop uh, of the highest order, I guess you'd say. Um, the way it goes, I quit, I quit, I quit, uh, nobody's business, um, the world comes crawling back, uh, just like my heart falls, be in love, I, the track listing is just packed with great songs. Go listen to this album. You've got to listen to it. It's just great. I love it. And then we have, we're on to a couple of compilations, and a couple of compilations by, again, female artists. This, this might be the chapter of my CD collection that has the most female artists in it. I, uh, Patsy Klein. This is the two-disc version of the Icon uh, compilation series. And she is kind of like um, uh, Willie Nelson and Johnny Cash. She is kind of a timeless... Uh, genre spanning, genre transcendent artists. She is just an absolute classic in every sense of the word. Patsy Klein, I love her. Uh, Walking After Midnight, I Fall to Pieces, Crazy, and and that's just for starters. I mean, you, you gotta love her. Patsy Klein is just fantastic. And then we have Rosemary Clooney. Uh, this is this is just a one disc uh, volume in the Essential Collection. Uh, and I found this. I as I recall, I found this at Everyday Music up in Portland for a dollar ninety-five, and it was in perfect condition. Uh, just yeah. Let's see. Uh, Come on to my house is one of her biggest hits, and let's see. I don't know. Oh, this old house, I think was one of her signature songs. Uh, but yeah, the rest of them are pretty much uh, um, Great American Songbook standards. But uh, yeah, good artist, and she is George Clooney's mother. I don't think grandmother. No, George Clooney's too old for her to be his, his grandmother. But uh, yeah, so there you go. Trivia time. Uh, anyway, on to another artist from a classic era, The Coasters. Yes, I have a handful of these, these doo-wop or classic uh, rhythm and blues or, or R&B artists in my collection. I mean, it, it goes kind of like these artists like this kind of go hand in hand with Motown. The Coasters were not a Motown artist, technically, but uh, got to love I just love classic soul and R&B music. What can I say? And the coasters were uh, right up there with them. Oh, let's see. What were? Oh, Searchin' was one of the great, great songs of theirs. Yakety Yak and Charlie Brown. Come on. The coasters. Come on. And then we have a uh, 70s, I believe. Yes, I think this was when this was put out. 
a 70s artist. Joe Cocker is uh, his probably his most well-known am well-known album with a little help from my friends. Uh, excellent stuff here. Uh, Jimmy Page and Steve Winwood apparently performed on this album. They were some of his musicians. So uh, another trivia note in case you didn't know. But uh, yes, the title track on here uh, is one of his his signature song probably, as well as uh, Don't Let Me Be Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood, uh, along with Bye Bye Blackbird. Kind of, that's kind of an odd choice for him to uh, sing on this song. And. Uh, yeah, and this one has actually, this is a remastered edition. It has two bonus tracks on it. So, <clears throat> Now this next one is actually a, uh, this is a boy band. And I think I mentioned in a recent video, I can't remember when. Hmm. Actually, I think it was my introduction to my 2010s. Or was it my 2000s? Now, it, it was 2000s because I did this in the 2000s. I talked about how I ordered from the UK huge lots of uh, UK and European CD singles and like one of them was like a box of a hundred and I had them shipped to my house well this artist uh, was um, within that lot in, in one of the lots there were like three singles by this artist this band and I enjoyed each one of those songs so much that I decided to seek out the album that those singles were on and that is this artist they are a boy band called Code Red uh, they put out three albums and obviously these guys were pretty much known only in the UK uh, the UK and Southeast Asia, I think. Uh, but yes, let's see. Uh, Is There Someone Out There was one of the th singles. And uh, What Would You Do If, as well as Can We Talk. Uh, but that's that's only a few of the really good songs on here. Uh, I Need Your ETA is another really good song. And uh, so, yeah, a very good artist. Uh, they, they put out two other albums, and I actually did pick them up at some point. Uh, was not nearly... Uh, it didn't get nearly into those two albums as I did their first one and this one by the way is called Scarlet and in keeping with the theme their other ones were called Crimson and oh no the, the their third album was called Crimson and but their middle album just had a different title that was not a it was not titled A Shade of Red so but anyway moving on from Code Red we have Leonard Cohen yes uh, I had to had to pick up the essential two two CD uh, set. Uh, this is another artist that I, I like him. I like several of his songs, just not enough to really uh, spring for picking up his individual solo uh, studio albums. But oh, what's the song that was featured in a um, a movie? Oh, everybody knows is probably my favorite Leonard Cohen song, next to Hallelujah, of course. But yes, everybody knows was featured in a movie called Pump Up the Volume, which uh, if you can find a means to watch that movie. It's worth watching. Very interesting. It's not so much a movie about music as it is about teenage angst in general, even though its foundation is uh, a guy who runs a pirate radio station and so it plays a lot of music throughout the movie. Uh, but yes, uh, a good movie. Uh, Christian Slater is the star of the movie anyway. But yes, Leonard Cohen is great. And here I have another uh, best of or compilation CD, Mark Cohn. And he is, this guy is a really good singer-songwriter. I heard about him through somebody else's YouTube channel. And uh, I, I rather came to like his stuff. And I think, I can't remember, but I think his debut album is going to be somewhere in one of my bargain bags. Somewhere between this year and the end of next year. So, spoiler alert, maybe, because I could be wrong. So, anyway, on to a more contemporary rock band that I uh, rather come to enjoy, at least their first two albums, uh, Coin. And the light is bright enough that you probably can't see. Okay, there you can see it a bit. Uh, this is their self-titled debut album, as well as their sophomore album, uh, how, uh, how Will You Know If You Never Try. So, yeah, good stuff. I have, uh, I've kind of fallen off on them because I have not listened to their album or or is it albums since those two there's just so much music to keep up with i mean how can you how can you how can you keep up with it all uh, and then here we have another artist that uh this is an artist you definitely have heard of coldplay i have uh, their first four albums uh parachutes as well as rush of blood to the head along with x and y and x and y is probably my favorite even though a lot of people would not call that album their favorite. I can be a little weird that way. I can like, you know, 
glom onto a certain album that most other people who are fans of that band wouldn't glom onto. Not sure why. And here we have Viva La Vida or Death and All His Friends. I did have their two or three albums since then, but when I was uh, culling my CD collection several months ago, it's just I wasn't nearly as fond of the more recent albums as their first four. It's just they've, they've gone a little bit too poppy, which for me is kind of it's kind of weird for me to accuse a group of being too poppy because I like pop music, but it's just kind of it's just they did the post Brit pop thing, I guess you'd call it. Uh, better than they do the pop thing, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, my Coldplay fandom sadly fell off uh, after Viva La Vida. <clears throat> and now we're going, uh, taking a throwback to a classic artist, Nat King Cole, and this is his uh, collector series. Uh, I've got a few of these, uh, yeah, Capital Collector Series volumes. Uh, a lot of great songs from this guy. Get Your Kicks on Route 66. Uh, I Love You for Sentimental Reasons, Mona Lisa, one of his uh, signature songs, as well as Unforgettable, and Walking My Baby Back Home, that's a great song. And yes, so many songs of his are just absolute classics and for darn good reason. And speaking of Nat King Cole and Unforgettable, I have Natalie Cole's uh, uh, song on album Unforgettable, and this is actually the uh, recent reissue, the anniversary reissue with two bonus tracks. And uh, no, you're not seeing things. This actually is in a purple tinted CD case. I mentioned in previous installments you've seen, I've got some tinted cases that I have replaced, you know, put uh, certain CDs into tinted cases just because I got a bunch of them and wanted to do, needed to do something with them. So I just figured purple would, purple goes with Natalie Cole and this album for some reason, I just thought. So uh, yeah, there she is excellent album full of great American songbook standards and a fantastic vocalist as well. And then we have a more recent artist. Uh, she's also a Cole, but she's not related. Paula Cole. Uh, this is her debut album Harbinger and her big smash success album This Fire, which had this is one of the best albums to come out of the 90s in my opinion. Uh, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone is a great song and of course um, I Don't Want to Wait was the theme song to uh, Dawson's Creek, the TV show. And uh, Road to Dead is another really good song off of here. So, yeah. And Hush, 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 which was written for a friend of hers who passed away from HIV AIDS. So, yeah. Very, very good album. And then we're moving into a very recent artist. Uh, one of my favorite artists, I've got to say. Just fantastic stuff. I w I've uh, been to see him live once and he puts on a mind-blowing show. He does every instrument by himself with the use of uh, loop pedals and stuff. He's just unbelievable. If, if you've got the opportunity to see him, go see him. He will blow your mind. Jacob Collier. Uh, this is actually a Japanese-only release of uh, some of the covers that he did that he made famous on his YouTube videos. Uh, it's called Pure Imagination. It's got uh, Close to You, a Burt Bacharach cover, Georgia on My Mind, which was made famous by Ray Charles, uh, don't you worry about it, or don't worry about a thing by Stevie Wonder. Oh, what a beautiful, oh, what a beautiful morning, which was a song from the uh, musical Oklahoma. Uh, Pyt by Michael Jackson. So, yeah, great stuff, and a couple of other great American songbook standards. So he kind of does all sorts of different uh, genres of music in that uh, in those covers. So that's great. And then his uh, uh, this album was my favorite album of its year. 2016. I absolutely love this album to the ends of the earth. It is called In My Room. You have got to hear, if you hear one Jacob Collier album, make it this one. Uh, it's just a fantastic. I love it. And I've been, uh, yeah, it, I loved it so much that his subsequent albums were bound to disappoint. And unfor for, unfortunately, they did not by a whole lot. But uh, yes, I've got the first three volumes of his Jesse, or is it D. Jesse? Uh, cycle volumes one and two and volume three and I am anxiously awaiting volume four when it comes out that that will be the concluding chapter of the Jesse cycle and then on to uh, an artist that uh, you are definitely familiar with uh, or at least I would hope you are Phil Collins yes this is his two disc the singles anthology and 
this is one of the artists that I'm kind of tempted to uh, collect the studio albums of, but I just haven't uh, haven't bitten the bullet, I guess you'd say. But there are also several songs that he did, at least I think there are several songs that were non-album songs, and so that I would kind of miss out on if I, got, if I just had his studio albums. Uh, one of my favorite songs of the entire decade of the 80s actually is track number one on disc one here, Easy Lover, his duet with Philip Bailey. A great, great song. I love it. And, well, uh, any Phil Collins song that you can name that was on the singles chart is on here. Uh, great stuff. <clears throat> and then here is another album that, uh, again, we have a Skips price sticker on the back here. This is Only the Lonely by Colony House. This was put out in 20, 2016. Uh, their major label debut. I really, really enjoyed this one. And... Uh, I kind of had second thoughts about it briefly though because I did sell it to the store and I think this was probably the one that I sold to the store but when they were going out of business I decided okay I made a mistake I had to buy it back so remember it's me you're talking to a compulsive uh, change my minder and rebuyer of CDs and then we have the Commodores a classic soul and R&B group from the 70s and 80s and this one was actually on the freebie shelf and as such it um, it's got more scuffs on it I don't know if you can even see the scuffs yeah, you can kind of see them uh, so yes I or ordinarily I would not pay money for a CD that's scuffed up like that but it does play all the way through with no skips so yay but yes a lot of great great songs on here they're they're big hits brick house and easy uh, Three Times a Lady, Night Shift is one of my favorite songs by the Commodores. <clears throat> now these guys you will probably never have heard of unless you happen to be watching from France and are of a certain age. Uh, Les Compagnons de la Chanson. Now there is a story behind this. Um, there is a 45, I, th I, think, I think it's, yeah, it's a 45 RPM, a 7 inch record that actually has four songs from this album on it. It was in my parents' collection. My parents lived in France for a while. My dad was in the army, so he was stationed there for a while. And so they brought that record home from, uh, from France, and I listened to it several times until I decided, okay, what else am I missing from this album? So I went on to, uh, I think it was eBay, and tracked it down, and there's actually 23 songs on here, including all four songs that were on that 45. So, yes, this is very entertaining. Uh, very, very 60s, uh, kind of 60s mod uh, with a French uh, a French sensibility, I guess you'd say. So uh, it's entertaining, it's fun. I'm not quite sure what a lot of the lyrics say, since I've, I'm only iffy on my French, but hey, it is entertaining and I do not regret picking it up. Now, <clears throat> one more drink we, before we go into the home stretch. Uh, now this is going to be all one artist except for the very last CD here, but this is one of my all-time favorite artists. They started out in the 80s and went through, well, through the late 90s, or no, early 2000s, and went, you know, went uh, quiet or uh, dormant. That's the word I'm trying to think of. I'm kind of surprised I can think up the right words on, with such little delay. Anyway, they went dormant for a long time and finally released a new album last year. We have the Connells. Uh, these guys are out of Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, yes, I used several of the tinted CD cases for these releases. Uh, the tinted cases work really well when the cover art is black and white. So this is their debut album, Darker Days. And these guys are compared most often to R.E.M. So they have a bit of a jangle pop, college rock sensibility to them. And this is their sophomore album, Boylan Heights. And this one I actually have also have on vinyl. It was in the $1 section over at House of Records a few years ago, so I picked it up. And then their third album, Fun and Games. Their fourth album, One Simple Word. And this one is actually in a non-tinted non case, but the spine is blue, so uh, it went with... Uh, see, that's what I, w was, what I thought I was getting when I ordered those tinted CD cases. I thought I was getting the clear CD cases with the colored trays, and I was... I was hoodwinked, gosh darn it. But anyway, as you can see, I found use for the tinted cases. Uh, their 
fifth album here is my favorite Connell's album it is called Ring great great stuff on here um, well I would cite songs but uh, it would kind of be meaningless because you guys don't know the band or I don't know maybe I should cite them I need to do a video about the Connells just specifically so I I, I plan on doing that at some point uh, their next album Weird Food and Devastation which is this one is probably my least favorite album but I can't not keep it in my collection um, and also the one with the weirdest title and then we have their album Still Life and this one was from 2000 no 1998 Still Life and uh, they did put out an independent album which I don't have shortly after Still Life but then they went uh, dormant until 2021 when they put out their latest album Stedman's Wake which is really good as well so this one it can this one kind of picked up it amazed me because it picked up right after it's like right where they left off uh, Doug McMillan's voice is still as great as it ever was and the band is still tight uh, it's not all the same members but it's it's uh, some of the same members but yeah yes the Connells hold a special place in my heart uh, and in my CD collection obviously so yes great artist if you have not checked them out give them a try and uh, I will tell you the story about how I discovered the Connells when I do that Connells video but finally the last CD in this block of my CD collection is the self-titled album from Harry Connick Jr. this is an instrumental album uh, he does about half of his albums I guess maybe closer to a third of his albums are instrumental and the rest are vocal I have several of his albums uh, his his discography is one of the more spotty ones where I just have a select random well not really random uh, assortment of albums of his and yes this is his first album uh, he is was born and raised in New Orleans so he has a lot of that uh, New Orleans jazz in his sound if you're not aware of Harry Connick Jr. but yes he was a tremendously talented pianist at what was he uh, 19 years old I think when he recorded this album so uh, yeah good stuff so there we have that latest chapter in okay I can't really give you a good view of it from there without risking dropping the uh, the thing so yes that was my uh, chapter four of my whole darn CD collection I hope you enjoyed it and uh, let's see here hang on hang on one, one second sorry um, I should have my uh, closing memorized by now shouldn't I really uh, where is it that's one thing I keep forgetting to do is have that at the ready before I start my camera shame on me and no I'm not gonna bother editing this at all so, because I want you to see my awkwardness on full display and my in incompetence as well apparently but anyway yes um, that'll do it for chapter four of my whole darn CD collection I hope you enjoyed this video if so hit that like button and share it with your friends and give me your thoughts questions suggestions or constructive criticisms in the comment section below also scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow youtubers who are all worth checking out and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video or go live. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob. See ya.